What is happening, guys? Cowboy here, and we're back. So I was gonna run through and fix up everyone's arts, but, uh, yeah, empty party. Womp womp. Anyway, uh, I gotta find Eleanor, and what the fuck is she doing all the way at the North Watchtower? How do I even get over to there? Outer path. Is it connected via the North Watchtower? Oh, boy. Uh... Maybe it's easy to get there. Maybe I just gotta go this way a little bit. But this is good. This might be Eleanor finally coming to terms with the fact that Artorius is a douchebag. I mean, she's sitting here. She's basically, well, she's protecting a Therian. Little girl. She should be well aware by now that Artorius is a douchebag. After it's been brought forth that, you know, Velvet lived with him for a number of years, and despite that, he sacrificed Velvet's brother. I mean, he more than likely, like, the whole, I mean, I, I, given I don't know everything here, but I'd be willing to bet that the, the quote, accident that happened with Velvet's sister probably wasn't an accident. Hey, Rokuro, have you seen Eleanor? Uh, probably. I don't know. Get drunk. Just try not to go overboard. But, man, are we a bunch of screw-ups or what? I mean, we've kidnapped a prince now. They gotta have laws against that. Broke out of prison, flattened Helavis, tried to assassinate a shepherd. Hey, how many infractions do you think we're on the hook for? Pardon me if I don't stop and count. If you don't like it... Nobody's forcing you to tag along. No. I still haven't <laughs> repaid my debt to you. You say that, nah. but you really just want to beat Shigure, don't you? Whoa. To me, they're both connected. It's a long story, but I can tell you if you... I'll pass. Well, join me for a drink then? Can't. I'm 19. I mean... I don't really think the rules surrounding drinking really matter when you're a demon and doing all the shit she's doing. Hey, you got any idea where Eleanor is? No, sorry. I was having a meeting with Benwick and the crew about our search for Eifried. Are you sure you're okay with putting that off? At this point, the Abbey doesn't have much reason to keep him alive. Wouldn't you rather look for him than Therians? I know time is a factor, but we still don't have any decent leads. I think we need to stir up the Abbey and see what shakes loose. And who better to do that than you? So this works for both of us, then? Never fear. I'm still acting out of self-interest. Besides, Eifried won't die so easily. He's a strong man. It'd take a lot to bring him down. Yeah. I've never seen him flinch from a storm, no matter how choppy the seas. Where angels fear to tread, as they say? <laughs> Probably some of that as well. I mean, if he's a prisoner, it's... If they want to kill him, they'll kill him. Hey, any idea where Eleanor went? How should I know? I'm too busy to spare any time worrying about anyone else. You look pretty distinctly unoccupied to me right now. Right, I'm busy being unoccupied. You're... what? It's simple. When you have free time, it means you're busy trying to avoid having any business to do. You're too weird for this world, Mogulu. Says the woman with the world's blandest personality. I always figured you'd be the type to take off as soon as things got hairy. So what keeps you here? I am utterly, completely, totally, wholly devoid of anything else to do. Which is to say I'm... Unoccupied. Right, now you get it. Besides, I have to stick around to see how our bet turns out, don't I? Okay. South Watchtower? North Watchtower. Let's head towards that way and hopefully it's just a straight connection to it. I mean, having a whole prison island to myself is pretty neat. I mean, not to myself. Like, obviously there's, you know, the crews here and whatnot, but still, it's our prison island. 
Makes a hell of a fortress, that's for sure. worried about you you actually came looking for me can't say no to a crying child uh, indeed she may be a therian now but deep down she's still a lonely little girl that's something I've come to realize in traveling with you all wretched demons and therians even the Malachim who I'd only thought of as tools they all live and think as humanly as the rest of us. Mm. I was so clueless. I didn't know what demon blight really was, nor what the Abbey was doing. Through it all, I... I knew nothing beyond blind belief in whatever I was taught. Ignorance is bliss, as they say. The coward's path is not that of an exorcist. They may say... I didn't know anything, so I can't be blamed. I can't... I can't live like that. <sighs> I think I'll stay here a little longer to cool my head off. Please tell Kamoana I'm alright. Don't stay out too long. The sea breeze can get cold. Thank you. Don't get the wrong idea. If you got sick or something, Kamoana and Lafisa would worry. That's all. I have something to say. There's something I've been hiding, until now. I've been acting undercover on a special mission for Lord Artorius. I was to watch over the Malik Lafiset and bring him to Abbey Headquarters. So vital was the mission, I was to do whatever it took, even kill my fellow exorcists. You are gonna take me to them. I'm sorry for deceiving you, Lafisette. Originally, I was going to get you to lower your guard, then take you in. However, I no longer intend on following the Abbey's orders. You're turning your back on Artorius? No. I still believe in the sincerity of Lord Artorius. That the world he seeks is one that will benefit all humankind. But nevertheless, I simply cannot bring myself to condone the methods he has chosen to achieve that vision, so... I will help you protect the Therians, until I discover the answer I seek. Eleanor! I want to live a life that I don't have to be ashamed of, and to do that, I have to learn the truth for myself. <laughs> so, you live by your emotions after all. Maybe you found your own creed. Welcome to our wonderful world of wickedness. Don't equate us. To act in opposition of one's feelings is to act opposed to reason. You never make things simple, do you? You should be glad I don't. Yeah, after all, she's my vessel. Yes, yes.
So, I think our next order of business is to find ourselves another Therian. Well, that's the extent of my insight. Anyone got any actual leads? What if we had Eleanor swipe some intel on them from the Abbey? That could work. I don't know. It wouldn't work. Officially, the Abbey still considers her a traitor. So who would leak anything to her? Yeah. Besides, we can't put Lafayette in danger like that. And anyway, Eleanor's terrible at being a spy. Ungracious, but accurate. You know that special underground cell from yesterday? I want to go back there. There's something I want to try out. All right, let's go. Oh, this is going to be such a long run to get there. Laffy said, I must offer you an apology. What for? For spying. I was plotting to take you back to the Abbey. I am truly sorry. It was your mission, wasn't it? Somehow I think I always knew. You... you did? Call it a hunch. Besides, Velvet was really suspicious of you. Whenever you feel you're doing something wrong, you start to sweat a lot. It seemed odd. How long have you known? Ever since you became a vessel for me. I think Velvet knew too. <sighs> That's quite a shock. I failed completely in my role as a spy. <laughs> it's pathetic. Shameful, really. Well, I think it says something good about you. Huh? Someone who can't lie well seems like a better person than someone who has an easy time of it. Thank you, Laffy said. I think you're the better person here. I wouldn't go that far. Hmm? What are you doing here, Bianfu? I was hoping you'd let me join in! We're in the middle of something important. Please leave us be for now. I'll be quiet! Just let me hang around, alright? Afraid not. <laughs> Madam Eleanor is a mealy head! She's a what? Laffy said. Thank you. I hope we can stay friends. I hope so too, Eleanor. Hey, Bienfu, I have a question for you. I know Magilu likes to call herself a witch and all that, but what is she really? The obvious guess would be that she's an exorcist, but I don't think I ever saw her name in the roster. That's not surprising! She is indeed a bona fide dark witch! I should know! I saw one night just how scary she could be! It's enough to keep you awake at night. It was near the crater of a volcano. Above the bubbling magma sat a huge cauldron. Inside the cauldron, a blood-red liquid stickily simmered, boiling in the hellfire heat. When droplets splattered onto Miss Magilu's cheeks, she just cackled and licked it off. And she kept the cauldron boiling for three days and three nights. What was she making? Strawberry jam. <laughs> what? What's scary about that? I was just getting to the scary part. Instead of using sugar, she put in soy sauce, cooking wine, and liquor. Soy sauce and strawberries? Is that normal? You wouldn't think so, but that contrast in sweetness, sourness, and saltiness actually makes it taste great. Not that someone like you would understand the appeal. You have to have a refined palate like mine to appreciate it. Wait, I've heard of that. You can boil things in soy sauce and wine to preserve them. When you do it with strawberries, it's called strawberry soup. That's right! Actually... Strawberry soup has sea urchin and abalone, not strawberries. It's just called that because the sea urchin plumps up like berries. And it's not preserved either. Really? Well, I had no idea! Wow, I really liked it too! I wonder if the reason she's never made it for me again is because she realized the mix-up! Now that I think about it, that's not the only thing I liked that she made one time! Like durian jellies and the candied sweet fish too! I think I see what's going on here. What does the food she's made more than once taste like? It's just normal stuff, like what you guys always have. Only a truly scary witch could hide that much cooking talent behind such plain tasting food with no one the wiser. And another one, Jesus Christ. Never ending skits. I know this smell. Yeah, 
It's Prince Percival's fragrant wood perfume. When I told him I'd never smelled it before, he put a little on my sleeve to try it out. I love the smell of the royal family's perfume. It's distinct, but not overpowering. It's made from Fandaria trees, conifers that grow in a snowy land. I've noticed that you and Velvet and Mogilu smell nice, too. Do you all wear the same perfume? We do? We don't use that stuff, but maybe you're smelling the soap we use. Oh, can only the royal family wear fragrant wood? No. Some fragrances, including the Fandaria-scented ones, only the royal family can use. But most don't have any such restriction. If they all smell so good on humans, why doesn't everyone use them? You know, I've never thought about that. Why do you think that is, Aizen? It's a bit complicated. To explain it right, I'd have to start with the history of bathing in Midgand. A few hundred years ago, people believed they would die if they took a bath. They were so terrified of baths that they wouldn't even go near one. I can't believe people would be scared of taking a bath. Why would that even happen? Well, at the time, a deadly plague was running rampant, and people thought that it could be transmitted through bath water. Bear in mind that this was all before we had proper plumbing or techniques to purify water. People couldn't just bathe anywhere. Sewers like the one we used to sneak through Logris are a fairly recent construction, only around a century old. Some people even thought bathing at all was unhygienic. Right. As bathing went out of style, the royal family started to use these fragrant woods. Covering up their bad smell with a good one. Yep. As a result, their perfumes used to be far more potent, to the point where you couldn't even tell if it smelled good anymore. But nowadays, nobody actually believes that bathing can make you sick, right? As civilization advanced, plumbing became widespread, and baths themselves became much cleaner fixtures than they used to be. And the fragrant woods fell out of favor because they were no longer necessary, right? To the contrary. As the people gained prosperity, the perfumes became a popular display of wealth. The newfound popularity didn't last long, however, thanks to the propagation of a new disease. One that didn't transmit through baths. Demon blight, you mean? With the rise of demon attacks, life outside the city walls became increasingly difficult. With fragrant woods now harder to come by, the perfumes once again became the domain of royalty. I guess that means that fragrant woods share a long and complicated history with plagues. To cover up the truth of malevolence, the powers that be spread rumors of a demon plague, continuing their time-honored tradition of covering up one stink with another. <laughs> so, what do you think of the perfume? Do you like it? Yeah, it smells nice. But I think I like the smell of soap better. Huh? Oh my god, and another one! This island is so amazing! It's far away from any other people and has so much hidden stuff underground! It's such a perfect hideout! Just thinking about it makes me so excited to be here! Yeah, I guess. What's wrong? You were so excited to be here before! Don't be such a drag, Loppy Set! It's just that this used to be a prison. People were brought here to suffer. If you're worried about how I feel, don't be. If I really hated this place, I wouldn't have made it my base. Hell, I was imprisoned here too, but now it's the secret fort I always dreamed of. I still haven't forgiven the guard who ate all those Maron glaces I was sent. I'll let the past be the past. What part of secret fort are you not getting? Yeah. But it can't all be just for fun and games here, either. In order to maximize the success of our future battles, we need to maintain and improve this base going forward. This place seems sturdy as it is. Does it really need more work put into it? Nonsense! This place was built to specialize in holding prisoners. We can make it better suit our needs. What are you proposing, exactly? Well, I think we need to start with smokescreen generators. They'll be effective against intruders unfamiliar with the layout here. Of course, afterwards we'll have to clean up all the soot, but still. No thanks. I think we need something to put out fires. The fire at Helavis was really scary. We have Molochim like you who could use water arts, though. If anything happens, you can just put it out. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. What we really need are some secret underground tunnels. If things get too hairy here, We'll need an underground escape route. 
We can put in hidden doors, and even some fake ones to trick the enemy, too. We have two separate docks. That's good enough. No enemy is going to attack without taking both docks into consideration. That's why we need to build underground tunnels before anything else. But we're on an island. You know, surrounded by water. Where would these tunnels even lead to? Isn't it obvious? We'll dig underneath the sea to another uninhabited island nearby. But there are no other islands nearby. If it means getting my tunnels, I'll build an island too. Are you listening to what you're saying? It sounds like he's daydreaming to me. And what's wrong with having some dreams? This is a great opportunity we have here. You guys just don't get it. It's okay. I get where you're coming from. But they'll never understand. You might as well save your breath. Oh my god, I think we're finally done on the skits. That's the wrong place. Alright, I need to go... Let's do this. We're gonna get down to this point before this episode's done. I mean, at this point, I might as well just rename this episode Skidopalypse. It's like... Three... Four skits in a row. It just... It, it was never-ending. Like, I like the skits, but that many at once is too damn much. And there also needs to be a way to fast travel in this bitch. The wrong way. when I get my damn geo board. I remember in the demo I had like a magical skateboard thing that I was able to ride on. We're here. What now? So I've been thinking about Earth Pulse points. They're where the flow of the Earth Pulse, the Earth's natural forces, are concentrated. Right. And Inominat is using those points to acquire malevolence and reawaken himself. You seem to have a knack for sensing them out. Once you're close enough, you can even pinpoint their location. Except, I don't have to be close at all. When we came here yesterday, I felt another place. A place just like this. Are you saying you can use this Earth Pulse Point as a conduit to find the others? I think so. I don't know how far it works, and I can't say if Ethereum will be on the other end. Still, it'll give us something real to go on. Please, give it a try. Okay. Anything? Yes, I felt it. There are dozens of Earth Pulse points scattered around, but I sensed a few big ones that stood out. So you can even detect their size? Yeah, at least I think I can. This island is one of the big ones. 
There are two more like it somewhere to the east and the southeast. But I think those are the Warg Forest and the Temple of Palamedes. Still, that suggests we're more likely to find Therians at the larger Earth Pulse points. We've got three Therians to go. Anything that helps us narrow down our choices is a boon. Yeah, you've done great work today, Lafayette. That's for sure. Thank goodness you're here. You're a marvel. One of the wonders of the world, kiddo. It's not that big of a deal, really. Hmm. Then let's go Therian hunting. We have an honest to goodness lead. Or dishonest to badness in our case. Broke again. Still not good enough. You think it's your swords that are weak? You don't think maybe your body's just stupid tough? No. If it can't cut me, it's just not good enough. I need stronger materials to make a better sword. I'd love to try Orichalcum, but getting that stuff is next to impossible. Orichalcum. That's the strongest metal in the world, right? A rare metal that's only been found in ancient ruins, and seldom at that. I've seen fragments of the metal myself, but I've never even heard of a piece large enough to forge into a weapon. I have. I heard a rumor that a block of orichalcum was discovered in an ancient ruin some 200 years ago. Unfortunately, the boat carrying it sank in a storm. From the depths of the earth to the depths of the sea. A sunken ship. Treasure at the bottom of the sea. <sighs> that would stir any sailor's heart. If we knew where to find it, could it be salvaged? The ship's crew drowned, so nobody knows where she sank. Besides, it's a centuries-old rumor. Who's to say it's even true? Right. <laughs> no sense in wishing for what can't be gotten. I'm sure there's other material you can use. <laughs> Even Dial makes a good point sometimes. Hey, what do you mean, even Dial? Even Dial's getting angry! Saying it like that's just weird, Kamoana. Even Kamoana's getting weird! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our target is an Earth Pulse point about as big as the one here. Let's start with the closest one and go from there. Which way is it? The closest one is to the west. Got it. Lead the way, Lafayette. My pleasure. All right, we are finally ready to move. I'm guessing. I wonder if that or a can be found. Take a look at. I knew this would be big. What a treasure! Scout ship. The first mate told me we're going to be looking for an Earth Pulse thingy, right? The ship's ready to leave whenever. Where can we choose to go? It's here! This is the Earth Pulse Point! Nothing but open water as far as the eye can see. Is your Earth Pulse Point down below? Oh. Uh, Most of this world is covered by ocean. So of course there'd be a lot of Earth Pulse Points in the deep sea. But surely even the Abbey would have a hard time containing a Therian underwater, right? Looks like this one's a bust, then. Sorry, everyone. Hold on. We've seen a bug Therian. You don't think there could be fish as well? You may have a point. I think I have just a solution for this. You do? This. What? what? <laughs> don't give me that look. I'll have you know this is Fujibayashi's rod. This baby's nine feet long, made from a single piece of the finest bamboo aged five years, with a slow 60-40 action that almost feels alive when it bends. 
Its exquisitely wrapped handle feels like an extension of your own arm. And just look at that elegant black lacquer finish. It's as perfect a fishing rod as there can be. I'm... I'm sure it's a lovely fishing pole, but... Fishing? Are you sure? This is Aetherian we're talking about. All the more reason. Remember who you travel with. Uh, okay? All right, if no one else will, I'm going to veto this fishing idea. Ah, oh, come on, let's give it a shot. Besides, I'm hungry. Even if all we catch is fish, at least we'll have dinner. Mm, I'd love to have me some koi or sockeye salmon. Don't encourage them. How do you attach the hook to the line? Like... this? <laughs> you don't go fishing much, do you? It's just been a while. I used to go fishing with my brother sometimes. This is my first time. Then we can try it together. I'll teach you how it's done. I didn't know you could fish, Eleanor. Yeah, when I was little, old man Tenny taught me. He was from my village. I've caught at least a hundred tree at loaches over the years. Wow! That's a lot of fish! Those two really get along. If I didn't know better, I think she's his sister, not his vessel. Eleanor certainly got Lafayette's number. Better watch out, Velvet, or she'll steal him away. Luffy said. Let's get the line set up properly. First, you take it and thread it through the hook, like so. That looks hard. Uh, hey, once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do it with your eyes shut. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Luffy! Huh? You mean me? Oh, um, I was just... Be careful there. Wouldn't want you falling into the water or anything. I'm not a little kid, you know. It's just that Luffy fell in once. A long time ago. Luffy? You mean your younger brother? That's right. You reminded me of him is all. If you say so. Is that all you wanted to say to me? Yeah, that's it. Okay then. I'm going back to fishing with Eleanor. Oh, poor Velvet. Mm -mm. People aren't as easily swapped in and out as fish hooks, are they? Is that supposed to mean something? Oh, Velvet, uh, you gotta get it a lot tighter than that. Here, let me take a look at it. Huh? Oh, uh... All right. <sighs> all right. So we got three different stars, and we are on Navaneltia. So we're gonna save, wrap things up here. A lot of fucking skits, but most importantly, Eleanor is finally making her own decisions. So either way, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys tomorrow with more Tales of Berseria.